The Vape Passion Show, episode 16. All right, welcome back to the Vape Passion Show. Not a whole lot going on with me, but I did get some new e-juice in from DIYVaporSupply.com. So I was introduced to these guys by one of my viewers, Vapey Dan. He's a local to them. And uh, he asked me if I was would be interested in working with him. I said, sure. So he went and talked to the owner because he's good friends with them. And uh, they liked the idea, so they sent me some e-juice. So I just got that in last week. I've already reviewed two of them. Yeah, two of them, and I haven't published those yet. They might be published by the time you watch this, but so I've reviewed two of them. There's three more left, and uh, yeah, so far they're both really good. So I'm really happy to have tried those, and thanks to Dan for doing that for me. Other than that, not a whole lot else going on. I was actually kind of worried that I would even be able to record this show because my daughter is two and a half, and she's starting to have some really bad tantrums. And anyone who has kids probably knows what I'm talking about. But so she goes through these phases where she has tantrums. They usually last three or four days. Um, she gets pretty defiant, but it hasn't been too bad. It, and then it, it stops for a couple of months, and then it starts up again. Well, it just started up again, uh, maybe four days ago and it's been really bad. This is as bad as she's ever been. She doesn't want to do anything that we ask her. She says no to everything. And then she just breaks down and has a tantrum. She'll throw herself onto the floor and she's just crying. So fortunately, she's not the kind of kid who has like high pitch screams. So I'm very happy for that, but you know, it still kind of sucks. And both me and my wife were very tired. She has these, these long tantrums before bed because she doesn't want to go to sleep, obviously, and she just wants to stay up and, and keep playing. But I record my shows, or I record all my videos after she goes to sleep. But, you know, usually I have to go to work the next day, so if she doesn't go to sleep at a reasonable time, I just can't do any recording. But she's sleeping right now, and hopefully she doesn't wake up. <laughs> but, um, so I'm recording as much as I can. Maybe I have, I'll have i have to stop and record some more later today or tonight. So anyway, that's what's going on with me. So let's just get into some news. All right, so this first article up here is from vaping360.com. They published a post called Nine Effective Ways to Fight the FDA. So I'm gonna go through a couple of their tips here. One of them being immediately join a consumer advocacy group. So groups like CASA or Not Blowing Smoke can use all, this, all the support that we can give them. If you're able to, donate some money. If you're not able to donate money, you know, that's that's fine, but show your support in other ways. Share their calls to action on social media, um, tell your friends about them, see if you can get other people to join. All right, the next one here is know thy enemy. So don't support the people who are attacking us, which would be places like the American Heart Association, the American Lung Association, American Cancer Society, Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, and CVS. So all these organizations, they do good things for the world, but when it comes to electronic cigarettes, not so much. So let them know that you're not gonna support them when they don't support legislation based on science. Okay, the next tip here is to get support of non-vapers and non-smokers. So even vapers don't know everything that's going on right now. The majority of vapers are not on YouTube watching vaping videos. They're just people who are using like a, a sig -like or a vape pen to quit smoking. So if they don't know what's going on, definitely non-smokers and non-vapers don't know what's going on. So do what you can to educate them you know, if you know people in your family, tell them about the Royal College of Physicians study that came out saying that vaping is 95% safer than smoking. Point them to the studies that show how safe electronic cigarettes actually are and how a lot of that fear-mongering out there from the media is not based on actual scientific research. Okay, the next tip here is to write letters to newspaper editors. Vaping360 mentions here that comments on websites are great, but the fact is that nobody really reads them. And, you know, that's totally true. I don't, I, well, I do sometimes read the comments because that's more for entertainment value. It's not for actually learning more because comment sections are just breeding grounds for trolls, but editors certainly don't read them and don't take them to heart. So what you can do instead of leaving comments is influence those writers and editors of those magazines by writing them a, a, a short, 
300 word compelling letter explaining to them your own experience with using electronic cigarettes. These newspapers, they receive a lot of letters like this. They might decide to cover your side of the story. Okay, next up here, support HR 2058. So that's the Tom Cole Bishop bill or amendment rather, which would change the grandfather date from 2007 to whenever it's passed. That would save so much of the devices that we use today. Because if that doesn't pass, Everything past 2007 is going to be banned. So just go to casa.org, C-A-S-A-A.org. Um, you'll find all the calls to action on their homepage and they'll show you what to do. You can just click a link, send off a letter to your representative, and you don't even have to find your representative. CASA does it for you. You just put in your state and they figure it out for you and they send the letter off. So go there and do that. And then after that's done, you can call your state representative's office. So I know people can be shy when it comes to getting on the phone, but it's actually pretty easy, and I know this from the experience of my wife, who worked for a state representative at one time, and she, she answered the phones for them. That's who's going to answer the phone, most likely, if you give your representative a call. They don't have time to answer the phones, so what their assistant does is they answer the phone. You just tell them that you want support from your representative on this bill, and tell them give them any additional input on why you want that support. They'll make a note of it, and you know, that's it, calls over. If they get enough of these calls, then they start paying attention. So another tip here from Vaping360 is to not support petitions to the White House or similar slacktivism efforts. So I'm not sure if I agree with that completely. I understand that those online petitions don't really do a whole lot, if anything at all. But you keep doing things like that and they do tend to get noticed, um, whether it's by anyone actually at the White House or just the media. I don't think we should stop doing those altogether, but there is a problem with doing those and that's when someone signs one of those petitions, they feel like they've actually done something and then they don't do anything else. That doesn't help us. So if you do sign those petitions, make sure you're doing something else that we know benefits our cause. All right, and the last tip here is to support vape shops and online vendors who are involved in the fight. So obviously we wanna work with people who are fighting for us and not, not these fly-by-night companies who just care about making a buck. Ask your local vape shops if they're helping to support advocacy groups. And if they're not, ask them if they're willing to. You can give them all the information they need to decide on, on what organizations to join and why they would want to join, things like that. And you know, if they just flat out refuse to support any advocacy efforts, stop giving them your business. Okay, and then some really good news, CASA just announced that they are joining a coalition with some of the other really big organizations, the advocacy groups in our industry, that would be SAFADA, the American E-Liquid Manufacturing Standards Association, the American Vaping Association, and Not Blowing Smoke. So some very big in, uh, organizations there. And it's great to see that all of these companies are coming together, pulling their resources, pulling their funds to fight against these FDA deeming regulations. Okay, and so Halo Sigs, uh, very, one of the biggest electronic cigarette companies online, the parent company, Nico Pure Labs, just announced that they are suing the FDA for their FDA re deeming regulations. This makes them the first company, first vaping company to do so. Their lawsuit contends that the FDA's rulemaking process violated the Administrative Procedure Act, and that deeming rule violates the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. The co-founder of Nicopure, Jason Del Gidis, stated that the FDA's rule does not protect the consumer from low quality products. Instead, it places a disproportionate and an unjustified regulatory burden on compliant companies, such as ourselves, who are determined to drive the industry to the highest standards of quality and innovation. And Nicopure Labs General Counsel and Chief Compliance Officer, Patricia Kovacevic, stated, the government's role is not to regulate for the sake of regulation. Regulation must be based on sound science and robust procedure, and it must accomplish certain public health goals. So yeah, uh, good to see that someone has already stepped up to bat to sue the FDA, and I'm sure this is just one of many, many lawsuits that the FDA is going to have to face. Okay, and then Not Blowing Smoke, they published this on their Facebook page. They compiled a list of questions that you can ask the FDA. These are questions that are just not so clear based on the very ambiguous writing of the deeming regulations document. So some of the questions they ask here, will I still be able to DIY at home or do I need to register as a tobacco manufacturer? I have an e-liquid line coming out next week. Will I be able to sell it? Will canthal wire and cotton balls now be considered tobacco products? Will I have to pay to sample e-liquid even if it's zero nicotine? Can I sell my device to a friend even if I'm not a shop owner? Can I give my old equipment to a friend who wants to stop smoking? Is my device a tobacco product even though I use it with zero nicotine? 
If I buy vegetable glycerin from a vape store, is it a tobacco product? If yes, what if I buy it at a Walmart? Lots of interesting questions there, and clearly people are confused about what these dimming regulations really mean. Okay, so changing subjects from the FDA stuff. So Evolve claims that um, Wismec, Joytech, and E-Leaf infringed on their patent by creating a board similar to their DNA 200 board or DNA board and started using it in their own products, which took money away from Evolve, obviously, because now no one's using the Evolve board. And on May 3rd, the judge denied Evolve's motion to have an injunction put on their products. The injunction would have put a halt on products coming out of Wismec, Joytech, and E-Leaf. Some people are saying that this is just the first step in, in the process of the case being dropped. I don't know much about law, but it certainly doesn't look good for Evolve. And a lot of people were actually predicting this because there have been lawsuits in the vape industry in the past couple of years and it never seems to work out for the people who are suing. We'll just have to keep an eye on that and see how that goes. I understand Evolve's frustration. It it does suck that a big Chinese company pretty much duplicated their board and is ending up potentially costing Evolve a lot of money. But then I also see the other side of it is that they didn't necessarily completely copy it. They took the board and made it their own. The industry evolves, products evolve, and whether Evolve believes that people would still be using their board if Wismec and Joytech didn't copy it, I don't know. I don't know if that's actually true because people are getting tired of spending 200 something dollars on a, on a vaporizer. You know, there are some people who will, but I think the majority of people have moved on to cheaper devices. And I think that's just the direction that the vape industry was taking. I don't know if people actually would want to buy the Evolve board anymore. But anyway, those are that's just my thoughts on the, on the topic. Okay, and so there was this post that I came across on Reddit. It was titled, Pro Tip, Vape into Something Inflatable to Find the Puncture. I think that's a really cool tip, except for the description. In, in the description, the guy says, it makes fixing bike tires a hell of a lot easier. Um, I don't know what bike tires this guy is able to blow into, but I, I've never seen a bike tire that you can actually blow up with your mouth. But anyway, throughout the thread, there was actually some really useful advice. For example, one person used it to find a boost leak on the EJ207 engine in a Subaru. So I don't know anything about cars, but I could imagine how something like that would be useful. Um, another person said that he's used vapor before to find a leak in an air rifle. So yeah, if you have some kind of product that requires no airflow leakage, that's a, a great way to find it. Another person says that he uses it to visualize airflow in the house when he's trying to cool specific rooms. So this is really good for me because I live in Colorado where it's very dry climate and hot in the summer. Because it's not humid here, we're able to use swamp coolers to cool our houses and that's what I use. So to direct the air through the house, you open up a window and that's where you want the air to come through and you have to mess with it a little bit because if you open it too much then the air the airflow kind of just dissipates or it doesn't come through the house right or it takes it away from another window where you wherever you're directing air through the house um, if you open it up too little then not enough airflow is making it to the room so i think that's a really good tip and i can't wait to use that one okay the next tip here is from vaping underground it's a thread titled o-rings for rdas etc so the person is looking to buy o-rings for their rdas drip tips etc uh, mostly looking for an assortment kit but haven't had much luck yet i've actually had to deal with this before too because i had an o-ring break on one of my rdas and uh, the first thing I thought of was to go to Home Depot and I couldn't find any O-rings that, that were skinny enough, thin enough to fit on the RDA. Um, they were small enough diameter wise, but they were just too fat and then the cap couldn't fit on top of the, the deck. So then I went to Harbor Freight and I bought an assortment pack and it was the same thing. There was a ton of different O-rings in there, but they were all too fat. So, a uh, waste of money there, but you know, it's Harbor Freight, so a whole assortment costed $6 or something like that, but anyway. So that, that doesn't work, but there were some comments. One person said that there are industrial supply houses like Granger, Applied Industrial Technology, Kamen Industrial, and Motion Industries that have access to just about any size overing that you would need, but the problem is you need an exact measurement. You could probably walk in there if, you're, if one of those places are local to you and give them your old O-ring and maybe they can find a match for you. But places like that are used to dealing with other businesses who are buying in bulk. So they might not be so nice in terms of customer service to someone who's looking for a single O-ring. But you know, last resort, that's a, something you can try. So then there were a couple of mentions of some 
vaping places, for example, Fast Tech, you can get uh, various assortments from five packs to 50 packs of different size O-rings for really cheap. And all of these O-rings, according to Fast Tech, are designed for vaping devices. So that's a great place to start and really cheap. If you've ever ordered from Fast Tech, it's gonna get there very slow. So if you need something right away, that's not a good place to go. But if you can wait a month to get all of your, all of the O-rings that you need, you know, make an order now and you're good to go. And then uh, a couple of vape shops here, Kidney Puncher, they sell a large assortment of O-rings uh, for pretty cheap too. You can get five packs of 10 for about $1.50. And then another place is Desert Vapes. So they also seem to have a pretty wide assortment and are fairly inexpensive. And then the last tip here is from someone who used to manufacture headphones. He used to buy O-rings from a place called MarcoRubber.com. He does mention though that if you go to any of these places to buy O-rings, not all of them are, are built the same. You need to look at the material information that tells you uh, which O-rings work best for certain chemicals or um, which are the strongest or which work best for abrasion. One particular feature that he mentions is that you should look for O-rings that are made of silicone because they have higher heat resistance, which is obviously very important for uh, vaping needs because you definitely don't want an O-ring melting on, on your device. But yeah, so if you need some O-rings, um, there's some good places there. Okay, so this next tip here is from Fat Daddy Vapes. They came up with a safety kit designed for the noisy cricket. So this is a, an upgrade kit and it's very cheap. It's only $14.99, so really good deal. So it comes with a new magnetic switch with a smaller button for an extended butt batteries, which makes it safer and helps eliminate dead spots. Um, it comes with a floating insulator with, a, with positive rivets to avoid dead shorts. And it comes with an extra tube so that you can use your old switch and parts for a standalone mod. It's all solid brass material with a copper plate finish and because of that it won't patina or tarnish and it eliminates the need to clean the contacts. The switch comes with a floating glass filled peak insulator instead of just regular peak and the rivet is highly conductive which makes it safer even with short atomizer positive contacts. The cap is also knurled so that you don't have to use a coin to unscrew it and the Delrin is also knurled so it makes it easier to unscrew. So a really cool kit from, from Fat Daddy Vapes. I don't actually own a Noisy Cricut myself but I do want to get one and I probably will eventually and uh, I think I'm probably going to order this kit too. This next one here comes from a thread on ecigaretteforum.com. This person is asking for advice on vaping in the office and if there are nicotine alternatives. He says he's starting a new job next week and he fears that vaping at work might be pushing the limits of you know being a new employee. So there's some good tips here like using snooze which is kind of if you don't know what those are they're kind of like chew but they're in packets. The tobacco in those packets go through some sort of different process than normal chew, a normal dip, which a lot of research has said has showed that there makes it very clean actually. Now if you've ever heard about um, smokeless tobacco being dangerous, causing mouth cancer, things like that, do some research and you'll find that all of those bad claims about smokeless tobacco come from organizations like the American Cancer Association um, and they're making the same claims against smokeless tobacco that they are right now against electronic cigarettes. And you dig into that research and you'll find that it's actually not true. There is practically no evidence that smokeless tobacco causes cancer. If you're looking for an alternative to using electronic cigarettes when you're at work, I think uh, using snus is not a bad idea, but you know, do your own research and decide if that's something that you want to do. Some other products you could use are nicotine gum or nicotine lozenges. One of my own suggestions in the thread was to use some nicotine toothpicks. Uh, I talked about these a little bit um, in one of my previous shows. I went to a vaping conference not too long ago and I picked up some nicotine toothpicks from nicotinepicks.com and I've used them a few times now and I really like them a lot. What I really like about them compared to nicotine gum is that the flavor lasts so much longer because nicotine gum, the flavor lasts like five minutes in, in my own experience. Uh, the nicotine toothpicks I've used up for 30 minutes and the flavor was still there. I just threw it away because I was done. I didn't need any more nicotine. So, and the nicotine too, it lasts just as long. If you need a little bit of uh, an extra boost of nicotine, you just bite into the toothpick and more comes out. So I'm a big fan of those. I like them a lot. And then something else you can use is a vaporless e-juice. So I mentioned this in a past show too, jackvapor.com. They're a UK company and they're making an e-juice called Clear Steam. It is an e-juice that has flavor and a throat hit, 
but doesn't produce any vapor. Something I actually saw later on in the thread after my suggestion of the clear steam is that you can actually make your own e-juice that doesn't produce any vapor simply by using 100% PG. So that, I never realized that. I actually, I thought that PG would always produce vapor, but um, this person in the thread says otherwise. So if you don't want to order from Clear Steam or if you don't want to order from Jack Vapor, consider making your own 100% PG e-juice. Okay, and this next tip here is another uh, thread on ecigaretteforum.com. So this person made an easy and cheap atomizer holder. He bought a post cap at Lowe's, uh, post cap being something you would use like on a, on a wooden fence. And the, the cap cost about three bucks. He just flipped it over and used a paddle bit to drill holes into it the size of his atomizers. He used a three fourths inch paddle bit and he said it fits the atomizers perfectly and the paddle bit has a point on it so it makes a hole that's a perfect size to fit the 510 pin. So really cool idea. And if you scroll down further into the thread, you see that someone actually already had this a similar idea, used a two x four and he drilled seven holes into the back of it and seven holes into the front. So the holes in the front are designed to hold the atomizers and then the seven holes behind it are designed to fit 30 mil bottles. So whatever e-juice is in that atomizer, he keeps the bottle directly behind it so he always knows what's inside that atomizer. That's a really cool idea. And he stapled cloth on the bottom of it so it sits without damaging whatever surface it's sitting on. He just used a two x four, sanded it down, stained it and glossed it so it looks great. So that's something I definitely wanna make and I plan to make it cause that's such a cool idea. So right now I'm using these little stands that I got from Fast Tech. They're just a little round circle that the atomizer sits on top of. And they're nice, um, they're in a really cheap, but I would like to have a sturdy stand also. So yeah, I'm gonna make one of those. And I have plenty of scrap wood in the garage, I don't even need to buy anything. Okay, and the next one is this video I came across on YouTube. It's actually gone somewhat viral in the last week or so. It's titled, They Call This Guy The Vape Wizard. So it's just some guy in a vape shop doing some vape tricks, but really crazy vape tricks. So he's like blowing O-rings through O-rings, making them bigger and smaller and wobbly, doing jellyfish. Uh, yeah, this guy really is a vape wizard. Um, I'll add a link to the show notes for that if you wanna watch it. Um, very cool. So I can't even barely blow O-rings. So to me, this is super impressive stuff. Just a fun video to watch. And then to close out the show, I just wanted to mention uh, uh, this fun clip. So Phil Basardo was recently on Vape and Fagan's Not Another Vape Show, episode 49. Phil was taking questions from the audience uh, through chat and someone asked him, boxers or briefs? And he responded saying he wears boxer briefs. But then Dirty DeVoe, being the inappropriate guy that he is. I wanna know if Phil wears boxers or briefs. I must know how he treats his massive hog. And then Phil said, Now I know he knows nothing about me. I always say the same thing. Look, I'm not a 26650, but the vape quality is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. You'll find the show notes on my website, vapepassion.com. If you want to support the show, consider donating to my Patreon page. You can find that at patreon.com slash vapepassion. Every little bit helps. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at vapepassion. And I'm also on YouTube, youtube.com slash vapepassion. And if you want to listen to the show in podcast form, you can find that on iTunes and Stitcher. Just look for the Vape Passion Show. And if you guys have any questions or comments, you can email me. Just hit me up at alex at vapepassion.com. All right, and that's it. So I hope to see you all again next week. Okay, so with all of the things going on with the FDA right now, people are starting to get worried, they're starting to hoard, and they're, um, people are starting to get into DIY because they want to be prepared to be able to vape if it comes down to it where they can't get e-juice anymore, um, at least for a reasonable price. So I wanted to do a quick segment on DIY e-juice. So it's really easy. You don't need a whole lot of stuff. So I purchased a scale. Well, actually, my brother got it for me for my birthday because I asked him to get it for me for my birthday. But this is a milligram scale, which is what you want for making e-juice. Um, I actually don't recommend this one because uh, it only goes to like 20 grams. So if you have a, if you want to make a 30 mil bottle or anything heavier, it can't read it. So um, this works for me because I just like to make small sizes. But go check out the DIY or Die vaping channel on YouTube. He has a website too. I can't remember the name exactly right now. But he has a recommendation for a scale. Oh, actually, you know what? I added it to my shopping list on Amazon. So let me look for that real quick and I'll, I'll find it for you. Okay, so it's the American Way Scales LB-501 digital kitchen scale. You can get it for $34.99 and it has a 500 gram capacity. So that's a get that scale. But anyway, 
Um, I'm going to show you how to use a scale, and you don't have to use a scale. I started out using just syringes, and it's fine, but it takes a lot longer because there's cleanup. You have to clean up all those syringes. I'm going to show you using the scale. The video I'm about to show you is my first time using it. All you need is um, syringes or a scale. You can get all this stuff from, from places like MyFreedomSmokes.com and the scale from Amazon. Um, you can get some nicotine. So I bought 100 milligram nicotine and then broke it down into 25 milligrams, and the rest of my nicotine is in my freezer. And then vegetable glycerin or propylene glycol or both and you can get a sweetener so i only have sucralose but you can get sweeteners like ethyl maltol just go to an e-juice website like eliquidrecipes.com find a recipe that you want to make and just buy those ingredients don't buy you don't need to buy anything else um, but if you go the syringe route you want blunt tip syringes so go to a vape shop to buy those because they'll make sure that you don't buy something you don't need you want one for each flavor and one for propylene glycol and one for nicotine. It just makes things a lot easier. If you get the scale, the only syringe you'll need is for nicotine. It makes cleanup way faster and way easier. All right, let's get into that video. I'll show you how to make a quick bottle of e-juice. All right, so I'm gonna try making a DIY Muffin Man clone. I just have my an old Vape Wild bottle here, all cleaned out. I'm using Flavor West Cinnamon Roll and Flavor Arts Fuji that I have in my bottle of 25 milligram nicotine, 100% VG. This recipe that I found calls for ethyl maltol, but I don't have that, so I'm gonna try using sucralose. Hopefully it doesn't mess up the recipe too bad. And my VG. So this is gonna be 100%, well, max VG e-juice. I'm doing this by weight. This is the first time I'm using this scale. So I have the bottle here. You have to use press the tear button to get it down to zero. The first ingredient will be cinnamon roll. So that calls for 0 0.6 grams. There's 0 0.6, a little above 0 0.6. Now I need 0.35 of Fuji Apple. So press the tear button again to bring it down to zero. There we go, 0.35. Ooh, that Fuji Apple smells good. And 0.1 of a sweetener, ethyl maltol. But like I said, I only have sucralose, so that's what I'm using. So we'll tear that out. This bottle drips really big drops, so I have to be careful. Okay, maybe one more. It's gonna go a little bit over. There we go. And point eight point two of VG. So this might be hard too in this little tiny bottle here with this big bottle of vegetable glycerin. There we go. Pretty good. And then three grams of nicotine if I can fit it in there. Let's move this over so I can get my nicotine out of here. Okay, let's see if that's enough. So we'll hit the tear button, bring that down to zero. We need three point oh three. There we go. All right, 10 milliliters approximately. Let's get the cap back on there. Shake it up. All right, there we go, all mixed up. That was really quick and easy. So let's see what it smells like. Ooh, yeah, it smells good. And I actually have some real Muffin Man that I can compare to. This smells stronger, it smells like stronger apple. All right, so I don't have a fresh build, a fresh cotton or anything, and I don't feel like replacing it. So I just vape this one dry and I'm gonna put it on there and see what it tastes like. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. Very good apple taste. I don't know if it tastes like Muffin Man, though, but very close. All right, let me vape this dry, and then I'll put some Muffin Man on. All right, got some Muffin Man in here. Yeah, it's not a, it's not an exact clone, but I actually think I like the DIY version better. The DIY version has a lot more flavor, for sure. Well, I'm happy with that clone.